welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Now let's uh, move on to other things. Uh, let's look at the many troubles of Abba Kiari. Uh, well, he does have many troubles indeed. Oh because during the week, the federal government approved the request of the United States of America to extradite embattled and suspended police chief Abba Kiari who is implicated in money laundering, identity theft, and conspiracy to commit wire fraud. <laughs> in conjunction with a UAE-based uh, social media influencer known as Hosh Poppy. Of course, his real name is Ramon Abbas. So uh, that's what we're going to be looking at this morning. And we have on our panel to do that with us, we have a security consultant, um, Comrade Oladende Adio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no longer Otumba. He's now Comrade. Yeah. I Com love that. Comrade Otumba. <laughs> oh, I love that. Good morning. <laughs> Looking good as ever. Thank you very one day, much. I'll get the one to come and pay. <laughs> hey, I don't know what you're paying for. <laughs> we'll get that. Maybe also he wants to pay for uh, Abakiari's bail. I don't, know. <laughs> um, I don't think that what he has done is bailable. Well, he said he wants to pay for something. <laughs> we'll come to that. We'll, we'll, to we'll that. talk about that off camera. <laughs> okay, also in the studio with us, we have Dr. Oamien Okidevie. Yeah. Did I get it right? Correct. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> He's also a security expert. And joining us virtually, we have um, our old friend, Barrister Malaki Ugumadu, former president, CDHR. Hi, Malaki. Good to see you. Also joining us virtually is the public affairs analyst, Aliyu Dodo. Morning. Okay, now let's get this conversation on the road. And I'd like to begin with the lawyer, if I may. Um, Malaki, we understand that uh, God, the federal government has given its approval for our super cop, in quotes, by the way, to be extradited. Um, legally, how much time does he have, bearing in mind that the NDLEA is actually taking him to court on the 7th? His trial in Nigeria will begin on the 7th. Okay. Well, um, once again, thank you for the Please opportunity. Um, I am okay. very about okay all right i'll try to do that in which all of this is happening the law is that once they exist between two nations or three nations as the case may be and by bilateral or multilateral uh, extradition treaty what happens is that once the request is made and parties are bound by that treaty to submit fugitives who have been requested to be extradited. Now, with respect to the Extradition Act, CAP E25, Laws of the Federation 2004, once you have such a request, the party to whom the request is made, when I say party, I mean the state party, mm -hmm. in this case, Nigeria, mm -hmm. to whom the request is made, is obligated under that act to send and extradite such a person to such a country where the request is made. Oh. That is clear enough. However, if you look at <clears throat> section three, subsection five, particularly subsection six, it is to the effect that once uh, there is a charge, a valid charge, before a competent court of law regarding the same person over whom the request has been made, such a country will no longer be satisfied first. In other words, the municipal country, which is Nigeria now, will have to deal conclusively with the case. 
Secondly, where the case, which is the prosecution of the charges or the offenses, leads to a conviction and sentencing, the person so convicted will have to serve out his terms in prison before the extradition can ever happen. I think this is the bone of contention now. So for me, what is the issue? The issue is, as at the time the request was made to Nigeria, uh -huh. was there a charge against Abba Kare? The answer is no. Yes. At the material time when the Attorney General brought his application before the Federal High Court, seeking the order of the court authorizing their extradition in compliance with the law as the chief law officer of the country pursuant to section 150 of the constitution was there a charge against abakari even if there was issue of indictment indictment in law is not a charge a formal charge or an information before a court the real charge is when you have been arraigned in court, and I can hear you now mentioning seventh or eight as the case may be. This is speculatory. So where we are now, and it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a pity because there's supposed to be interagency collaboration in a lot of this. Let us not look funny, particularly when we have consented and accepted to be part of the civilized uh, committee of nations. Uh, Dr. Malaki, is, is just a second. Um, the, the issues are very clear. I, I was a little troubled when you mentioned the word fugitive. Is he a fugitive? Yes. When, when the, what is a fugitive? When you have, when you run away from the law, from the long arms of law, you are regarded as a fugitive. I'm aware that they have been direct invitation. They have been charges you know, by the U.S. government requesting him to come over with respect to the internet fraud and uh, the case involving uh, the uh, hush puppy. Okay. So when you don't submit yourself for such investigation or trial, you become a fugitive. Okay. Even within Nigeria. Okay, okay. All right, it's a, it's, it was just a little scary when you used that <laughs> word, you know. But uh, let me ask uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Ari, okay, it's a Komtumba Ari, because I can combine it. Okay, what are, what's your take on all of this? First of all, for me, it was, um, uh, and for the uh, security community, it, it, it was a little, it was a root shock. Had someone so highly decorated that had to, you know, happen to him. First of all, w w how how did you receive that one? Well, for me, it wasn't. Uh, I wasn't shocked. Neither was I surprised. How so? Yeah, because um, over time, we've seen cases here in Nigeria where we systematically build up strong individuals as against building up strong institutions and they always end up abusing the opportunities i do not want to go into details but um, a lot abounds here unfortunately the society aided abakiari so much that it was unduly celebrated at a time when there were charges or accusations now flying around about him even evans when he was arrested declared that the amount of money seized from his house was far more than what was declared bit by bit people were coming out to say that their husbands cousins brothers or family were arrested by that the irt headed by kiari nobody gave them the listening ear mm. We saw him as being beyond reproach. There was a lady that was arrested and locked up on suspicion of being a drug pusher or something. For months, no charge was brought against him. Who does that? 
how do you elevate an individual to a point where you could do anything, you know? The most the impunity Lord. became the boss, the Lord, unquestionable, a KBSC kind of thing. There was a case of somebody who was, they had a transaction that went bad, and there was a debt arose. The man was picked up, forced, forced it into his bank, bank premises, and had to withdraw money in millions now, not transfer. Was it even, okay? They had to move money. I mean, without a court judgment, so many atrocities were committed. But the, the Nigerian society were so, we just got lost in the euphoria of Mr. Supercore, Absom Man. Unfortunately, truth remains constant. Falsehood may travel a thousand kilometers. Just one day, when truth moves, he will catch up with it. And that's why we are where he fell. we are today. Yeah. Now, all the, uh, the I mean, we, we have common friends. I'm not going to deny that. By the time you see a man of that status, especially considering the, the office he was occupying, mingling unwholesomely, you just know that um, his chicken will soon come home to roost. Mm attending nightclubs, dancing in nightclubs, and throwing the video out there, attending private parties. Way back in Abel my, my father had well, a friend. Is that a bad thing, really? Sorry? Is that a bad thing? He's in the society. If, even as you and I, the way we are, I can't, there are cases on this. When, when, when if I could hit my car on the street, I just came down to ask questions. Somebody said, ah, I know that my, it's, it's a TV man. I simply entered my car and I left. Before you know, the issue will be, you know, be turned against me. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So, I mean, just for because I'm, I'm a regular face on television. So it was something. It was you are raising more of a moral question. Is it, is it more, I mean, okay. so you yeah. don't know. And you know, today everybody has this uh, cheap answers. Before you know, they will record you Video. and throw you on, on the social media. Yeah. You now have a huge load on your head to, mm. to explain what transacted or what happened. Mm. To that extent, even you. There are limitations placed on you. There yeah. are things you will not do. Because if it happens, they will not mention your name now. But, but it's a choice. They say, Channels TV. It's a choice, <laughs> not necessarily a policy. You just said a moral burden. Okay, moral all right. Burden. Well, Mr. It's an Hidevi, ethical yeah. thing. Yeah. Mr. Hidevi, you know, um, I don't even know where to begin with you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> on, this, on this. Because on the one hand, uh, as you know, the, the troubles are many now. Um, on the one hand, some of the issues, it will seem like some of those issues are not going to be coming up issues that were uh, not known about, like the, such as uh, Mr. Rio has mentioned now, uh, where do you see this going? Because for me, it's more about the institution. Yes, the individual that we're talking about has been, his hand has been, so to speak, suspected to be caught in the cookie jars, you know. Um, that's where we are now. But talking about the institution and the circumstances that brought us here, we should not, it shouldn't continue. What are the vulnerabilities that you've seen in the system? Well, um, I think um, with all due respect, sir, and our online guests, I really appreciate that his narrative. Okay, um, let me start from Otumba. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see, I was in the military. Okay, so it was an opportunity for me to come out and also join private security. And with my level of exposure in security, I see some relevance in what Abakari was doing when he was going about maybe mixing up with the miscreants and all that. If, please take it a capital letter, <laughs> if, I-F, his institution is carrying on with him. Mm -hmm. There are undercover situations where when I saw those videos and all those things, my belief was just that how long will it take to wipe out this syndicate? How long will it take to wipe out this kingpin? Because when you romance them, you are be able to extract information. But I was shocked to find out that there was no institution. He was the institution, mm -hmm. like Otumba has said. So if there was an institution, he will have a team sending feedback to the police service and
putting evidences together, even if you have not picked the kingpin, mm -hmm. some persons connected to the transaction of those people, you just hear that they are arrested. How did they get information? They are arrested. You know, then you can now reverse another mole comes into their circle and continues the dancing with them in the club and all that. But, no, but, but, but Dr. it was Dr. unfortunate. Roy, Dr. Roy, yeah. we're talking about a super cop here. No, that's what I said. Him romancing those miscreants. Yeah. He's a known face. They yeah. all know he's yeah. a policeman. Yeah. So he cannot be, he could not have been acting under that cover. Yeah, so yes, because, the because there was one is no an unknown institution quantity. that would demand reports. Now, let me tell you what happened, madam. We, we started with political terrorism in Nigeria. We, we grew political, it was a new project, a new model. Even Donald Trump wanted to use it when he got hoodlums to start jumping into... So we have political yeah, terrorism. Yeah, yeah. We, we, Nigeria is special in growing models, okay? So wait, so, wait, wait just a second, I'm yeah, sorry. I'll get we, that clear. We have political terrorism in Nigeria? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, political terrorism is this. When you use politics as a weapon, you weaponize it to intimidate opponents and a general community of people. It's terrorism. Now, when you use politics to start ballot buses, that was where we started. Then we went into cyber terrorism in politics. We started to dig information, Evan and Evans, the Senate president, his name is Evan, is Evans. Then so many other big wigs, when they want to pull you down, they just pick up one thing. One woman came, she didn't do NYC, she had NYC, and all of a sudden, <laughs> Minister of Finance is out. So this thing started and we were embracing it. How was it possible? Because the institutions that we are supposed to use, the EFCC, the police, the military, the politicians were able to use those institutions as their, their handlebars. Now, if the military was able to stay on professionalism, how will you have generals being held wanted for billions of naira diverted, where there's no financial institution to monitor movement of uh, this ICPC, where they're not there, and who the, are supposed uh, to monitor I, I, ISO and all that. Now, when you see the police, Allowing the super cop to attain that kind of position, you begin to ask yourself, as a police officer, you drove XYZ car to the office. You took some pictures and we saw your house, how it is. We saw you with some people and the wristwatches and all those appendages. Whose responsibility is it in the police service commission, in the office of the IG? The army has military police to monitor officers. The police has their own policing too. What files were they raised to checkmate those things that the uh, Abakiari and his team were doing? So even if you were having results, what gave you the opportunity to buy a house, XYZ place? How come you can have this kind of affluence? How come you have this amount in your account? If the police can check my account, they can check any other person's account. But it's yeah. supposed Why to be a direct. Not not, put to be no, it was supposed to be a direct team reporting directly to the IG. IG. I mean, so are you saying that the IG was sleeping on? Not team? was. They are complicit, sir. Now, if you are irresponsible with your office, are you telling me that you duly deserve to retire and go home and sleep when there are? other entanglements that abuse that office. If I abuse my office and I have a superior, the superior has answers and questions to answer. Yeah. See, we so are when, just, you, when you say, well, just, just a second, when you say they are complicit, who are complicit? All the IGs that the, the, the Abakiari team served mm -hmm. under, not only yeah. Abakiari, all the IGs, all the, let, let's not even go to other institutions like military. All the IGs that Abakiari and other corrupt policemen served under has questions to answer, sir. Okay. Look, as a mandate, as an IG, Sorry. you are an inspector general of the police. Okay. Where are your eyes? Where okay. are your commanders? All right, let, let's oh, bring in just let let's bring in Mr. Me. Mr. Dodo. He's also been with us, you know, uh, virtually on this conversation. Mr. Ali Dodo, you have been listening. Most certainly, and I'm sure you have comments as well. Sincerely, I don't know the question to ask you, but let me begin by asking you what, uh, uh, concerning what uh, Dr. Ohidiavia just said. 
about IGs that uh, uh, these IRT teams served under uh, being complicit. Do you agree? Well, uh, to start with, for me, uh, thank you very much for having me on the program. Uh, to start with, I think Abba Kerry was over celebrated as a cop. Hmm. Why should an individual performing his duty, duty, duty because he he succeeded in one or two high profile cases? That was what he was trained for. Nigerian police force has expended a lot of resources training him to be the kind of officer he has portrayed to be. But for me, with what has happened in the recent past, it goes to show that all the resources and logistics that was expended on Abba Kerry is a complete waste of time. Oh dear. Irrespective if, of the scores of that he made, irrespective of his achievements, if he can find himself in such a shenanigan, oh. because for me, if you look at the tape that was being circulated, it's supposed to be a sting operation for crying out loud by the NDLEA. How on earth should a high profile evidence go, go out to the public? I mean, a, a sting operation being carried out by a high profile security agency with the evidence that can be used in the court of law against the, the, the person that is being investigated mm. is now in the public opinion. Mm. Okay. It's now but, in the court of public opinion. How do you explain Mr. Dodo, uh, yeah, th this is another now, you know, part secondly, of the conversation altogether. Just a second. It's another part of the conversation okay. altogether. Well, Barista Ugumadu, um, looking at all of these issues, the way they are building up, the question flying on my mind right now is, well, we're talking about the many troubles of one man. How systemic is the issue for you? That, that's a very important question. And um, let, me, let me indicate that my first intervention arising from your question was to speak directly to the law. And I tried the best I could to situate it within the context of the law. This is, uh, I'm not sure anyone, any Nigerian is happy about this. It's no, it's an e wind that blew no good air to anyone. It's terrible. Um, the first casualty, no doubt, is Abba Kari himself. The nation itself has suffered tremendously from this image battery. And of course, the third category of persons are those who, who genuinely, out of the desire to have a functional Nigeria, vested so much hope up to the point where an arm of the uh, National Assembly, House of Representatives in particular, gave a standing endorsement, a standing ovation to this particular officer. To be frank, there are so many people who who are scandalized by what has happened, but who are in pain that this is happening. Uh, so I needed to speak to that because uh, how many how many heroes have we have we thrown up in this country? And and uh, what is it about the reward system that ought to be an encouragement in even uh, security agencies? It helps to boost the morale of those who are ready to lay their life, uh, to put their lives on the line, who are on arm's way every moment of their life. And I thought that that perhaps was what the country was doing. Uh, is, it the, is it the Evans case? What about the Wadume case? Mm. And if we can recall a bit about what happened and how he took the same place. So I don't think Nigerians were, particularly those who are not within the law enforcement circle. Um, they were not, it was not a misplaced uh, judgment and interpretation of the extent that if such a situation to be conceived, nurtured, and given a life of its own in the, in the form and manner that we have seen it, please 
let me enter a caveat that Abba Kari is not yet a convict. It is that a lot is happening indicating that indictments against him may have some credibility right. and that a prima facie case must have been established against him, mm -hmm. uh, no less from the United States of America, where mm -hmm. thorough investigations, as we know it, prestige, arrest, request for extradition, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I do believe that it is not possible to find this level of oppressions sustained and protracted without the collaboration, what if you like, conspiracy of the system itself. And I, I, I imagine that this is why it is said hmm. that any crime that the society, that the government cannot unravel, the government itself is involved in that crime. Oh dear. So I do believe that it is, system, it is systemic. And I, I see that we have not seen the last of this. Hmm. It appears to me that this man in question, considering that he has met his water, Waterloo and may likely go down in history as such, may have to blow the lid open. And that is when you will know that uh, we have also managed to erect a criminal entity, which we are calling a country. In short, Chino Achebe's last book, before he passed on to glory, was is, there was a country. The use of that past tense is very instructive to me. And I'm one of those Nigerians who is seriously in pain, believing that we had people driven by professionalism and determination to be counted, their desire to help rescue this country and their willingness to place their lives on the line. But that is not all we're, we're witnessing at the moment. So okay. I agree that it is systemic. In short, my position is that he, he couldn't travel this far, assuming without conceding that all of what we see now is an established fact. He couldn't travel this far without the collaboration mm -hmm. of the system itself. Yeah. So I do believe it's systemic and it needs to be arrested. Yeah. Uh, Otumba, um, that a policeman so celebrated and so high up has been well, caught with his fingers in, 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 in the pie, as, uh, as uh, Ayo said earlier. What has that done to your general, um, should I say, impression and your psyche as a Nigerian when those who are paid to protect you and to keep you out of harm's way are the ones who are actually found doing things that they are not supposed to be doing. Thank you very much. Um, before no, just before you okay. respond, yesterday I was pulled over by a police woman who asked me, oh, um, mommy, good afternoon, ma. Um, how is uh, the weekend going to be? Uh, do you have any water for us? <laughs> and... I, didn't, I used to feel offended when those things happened to me. Mm. But since this Abba Kiari case, I just say to myself, if Abba Kiari can be caught hobnobbing with hush puppy, <laughs> these ones are only asking me for what, 1,000 naira? <laughs> ordinary water. So that's nothing. So I have now grown to expect to, be, to have my psyche assaulted and insulted by a policeman whenever I come in contact so with them. For, and that is the result he, of this case. He did ask for fuel. <laughs> well, we know, we know what water means, don't we? You understand? Thank you. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was being proverbial and being technical. Before I go to that question, let me quickly say that what Malami was trying to say, because people are saying that NDLA was brought up as a cover-up to prevent his being sent to the U.S. Yeah. But Malami said, in as much as the case in the U.S. has nothing to do with the it's one in Nigeria, here. they're not connected, that he will go there first. So he has cleared the air on that. Because the thinking was that Kiari is so well connected, you know, that he has the power, um, power fathers in the high places who will make sure he doesn't go to the US. Maybe even in Asarok. Exactly. I wouldn't know. <laughs> now, coming to your question, 
the last time I was here, if I can remember, we were talking about the complicity of the military in fighting terrorism, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And we, we all agreed that if they had no hand in providing information now to terrorists, the world wouldn't have gotten to where it is today. And I'm glad my brother is here. At a time when so much money was being demanded by the military to fight terrorism, and government was funding them only for the money to end up in the private pockets of the chief of air staff, the chief of army staff. I'm not talking of millions now, billions. Somewhere that one of them was found. Millions of dollars. Yeah, to have buried money in a, in a, in a, what do you call that thing now? In suck, the pit. Suck away. Suck away pit. It got that bad. You should know that my position remains the same. This is a dysfunctional society on virtually all fronts. And every time we go on air, we let people know that we are not just condemning things. We also offer possible solutions. But those who are holding the levers of power, are they listening? And if they are listening, have they ever sat down to say, oh, what these guys are saying? Let's look into it. Perhaps they are making sense. Okay. So because nobody is listening, and it's like we are not assiduous now, working and solving our problems. Instead, we are compounding our problems. Maybe they'll begin to listen now that, in light of this case. That's why we are where we are. When we discuss <laughs> economic issues and offer counsel on macro and micro, and including uh, Naira management against foreign exchange, other, 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 and people will say, what are we talking about? Because I don't have a degree in economics. Today, under seven years, the value of the Naira against the dollar had fallen to a point where we are wondering if we will not get to a thousand Naira chasing just one dollar. Well, we have to begin to wind down now. We have very, very few minutes, less than two minutes to go. But let, so let, let's begin to take your concluding moments now, uh, concluding comments now. Mr. Dodo, a sincere apologies. You joined us far later than th we thought, but uh, you know, our time uh, couldn't pause. So if you were to conclude on this, uh, what would be your thoughts? Okay. Uh, I want to throw the last line that spoke on. You see, uh, Nigeria is a country where Nigeria is a country where we waste a lot of resources and talents. We have a situation whereby we have a lot of vibrant youths that have super ideas that we, you know, government will take advantage of to create wealth. Wealth creation is about people that have ideas in the society. The government doesn't create wealth. You have to make use of the people in the society to create the, to, to translate their ideas into wealth. Okay. But they don't give that room. All right. Oh. Okay. So that that, 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 that's a, that's a good one. On that's a good on place on. to leave it, Mr. Dodo. Um, Barista Ogumadu, 20 seconds. Okay. I think uh, he's not there anymore. Dr. Roy. <laughs> okay. Your closing statement. Sorry, we take his 20 seconds. <laughs> 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 we, we seem to have let, let, let us Go pray. Let us pray because I've gone to get my voter's card. Let us pray that um, we'll vote. Our votes will count. Let us pray that we have a new government that will begin to look at accountability and penalties, judicial processes. A new government that will believe that it's there for the masses, not for the masses, for the government. Okay. Let, us, let us hope to see a government that will remove its claws from the institutions, especially security institutions, okay. rather than using it to intimidate opponents and the people. Come, Mr. Gumadu, are you there? I am here. Okay, okay, your closing statement in 20 seconds, please. Well, that would be that the government will take advantage of this unfortunate uh, incident affecting Abakari to understand the character of this problem, that it has become system systemic, like uh, Mr. Uh, your colleague said, okay. and that um, it will take the it will take such systemic existence of this kind of problem to make it difficult for instance to, to deal with security issues in the country. It, okay. It's becoming very 
unbelievable. Okay, that okay, the I'll Nigerian security system cannot fight Boko Haram, for instance, in this country. I think these are some of the reasons. Mm. We must take advantage of this. Yeah. Look, those who are holding levers of power, they must understand that power belongs to us, the people. We voluntarily release power to them so that they can manage our resources for common benefits, for general benefits. Okay. As against what we see, that some class of people are so wealthy while others are so hungry. Mm. They should not make peaceful change impossible. If they do, they are looking for violent change. Come Tumba. <laughs> On other end, are you security consultant? <laughs> I'd like to thank our panel this morning. Uh, you just heard the closing statements of Olaide Ende Ario, uh, Otumba security consultant. And we also had Dr. Oamien Roy Okidiebe, also a security expert. Thank you. Uh, Barista Malaki Ugumadu, former president, uh, CDHR, as well as the public affairs analyst, Ali Ududu. Thank you all very much for Thank coming to much. share your thoughts with us this morning.